I'd say 90% of my inspections come back to is when I, there's a questionnaire on my <clears throat> inspection forms. Did you or did you not receive floor care warranty, yes or no? Did you receive, and, and a lot of it is uh, environmental conditions, and, and most of the time the answer is no. And so it's really important when we start looking at is working with general contractors, uh, making sure that we've done our due diligence, getting that material out to the to the builders so they can pass it on. It's not no longer our liability, but it's passed on to the general. Simply is it because I get into where we start looking at checks or splits, and well, that check wasn't there or split wasn't there, you know, four weeks ago, and you go back to they have no humidification. They're on the 25th floor of a condo and you go, this should have been disclosed or brought up earlier. And many times they'll play the trump card when it comes to like in court, the sitting there, I was never told that. So it's going back to is how they actually play that trump card that I was never given that information. So one thing that we want to you know, get across today is to ensure that you know, when we start looking at checks and splits, we're gonna go through and how they occur, what, what we can do to minimize them, and how we want to identify them. Here, when we use that, back again, do we use a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to sales as well as installation? This is the one thing I see that happens a lot where, you know, I'll install the same product and I'll do it the same way on every single job. And I can guarantee everyone in this room, our houses are not identical. Our subfloors are not identical. You know, our environmental conditions are not identical. So it goes back to is we cannot use that one-size-fits-all approach. So, you know, do we have any control over wood and what it wants to do? We do, as long as we implement it. On the other faction is, if we don't do anything, wood's gonna tell us what it wants to do. My mentor, Jens Wilsliff, uh, when I was started out in 1971, uh, he was a Dane that came over from uh, Denmark, uh, fifth grade education, but he was probably the smartest floor guy I ever knew. And I remember him telling me time and time again, that the floor will tell you a story and it'll never lie. So, I mean, if it went through dry climate, it's gonna split. If it went through wet climate, it cupped. You're gonna find out what, what went wrong with it. Don't look for the, you know, someone to point the fingers at as much as identifying what was the causation of the concern. That's the same principles I use in my inspection practice today is we do reverse engineering to determine what actually went wrong. So as Michelle stated earlier, when you started looking at flowers, and, and it's the same thing, if I want to put an orange tree in my front yard, obviously it's the wrong geographical location for it, and it's going to die. And so it's the same thing as we start trying to qualify a product to fit an environment. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. So when we look at wood floor failures, 95% of them are all moisture-related. And we must understand that moisture will reach an equilibrium moisture content with the wood and specific temperature and relative humidity points. When we get into you know, what causes the failure, it's always gonna be ambient air, wet subfloors, tr topical water, no humidifiers, or possibly workmanship, for example, like scheduling or lack of expansion. This is one thing that we must consider when we start looking at what the failures will do. Here's just a simple little wood and moisture facts. You know, we look at a 25 square foot house and it's got about 13 cubic feet of wood and 40 pounds per square foot of weight. It's about 26 ton. The moisture content will range on, we have like finished products from millwork and trim at 8%, plus your construction products like timber, uh, two studs, that sort of thing, right up to 20%. Therefore, you'll find in a typical house of about two to five ton of water, or it's 400 to 1300 gallons. So that's how much that this house is holding, the building is holding in moisture. And so it's important, not just the wood floors, but everything within that residence. Now, when we look at fires in moisture, uh, the wood will continually absorb and release. For example, you look on the right slide here, wood is hydroscopic for life. It's gonna be taking on uh, cycling, just as we do in our temperature and relative humidity, wood will do the same thing. It is a sponge. And this is an important part when we understand of putting a product that's going to go into an environment, what that sponge is like. Can we predict it? Especially on new construction today, most likely I can predict it.